Following the release of Nier, but before Automata, Yoko Taro gave a presentation at a 2014 GDC event. It was titled, Making Weird Games for Weird People. The presentation was pretty interesting, going into the details of Taro's writing process and his thoughts on script writing in general. But he said one thing early on that caught my attention. I quote, As written here, Story and gameplay elements don't really matter to me. In the same way how to make money and techniques to create beautiful graphics aren't really important things to me either. For those that don't know, Yoko Taro is the creative director for Nier, Nier Automata, and Dragon Guards 1 and 3. So coming from him, this is kind of a shocking statement. Nier and Dragon Guard games are known and loved almost entirely for their stories. Each one of his games is heavily laden with symbolism and metaphor that are carefully used throughout the plot. The point is that these are very story-driven games. So my first thought was, what could he mean when he says that the story isn't important? Well, according to Taro, both the story and the gameplay, along with everything else, is nothing but a means to an end. They are steps on the path to his goal when making games. For Taro, the game is not important. The game is merely a vehicle by which a message can be transmitted to the player. I quote once again, We are game creators, so we make these games and share it with the person on the other side. Players will play the game, and hopefully they will feel something, an emotion. I design games and write stories, but my goal is to cause an emotional stir inside of the player's brain. So the fundamental goal isn't in the game sitting in the middle. It is the event that occurs inside that player's brain. This is the goal we must consider most important. Like I said previously, Nier is a game overflowing with story, and it's a damn good story at that. It is a narrative burdened with metaphor, symbolism, and a huge backstory that you'd have to do a lot of out-of-game research to know about. But this video is not about that. We aren't going to focus so much on the plot, but rather on what the plot is trying to convey. What is the goal Yoko Taro had in mind with this title? What is the point of Near Replicant? Compared to Taro's other titles, Nier's plot is comparatively simple, and its premise is easy to follow. The world is plagued by evil shadow creatures, and your sister suffers from a mysterious, incurable disease. While you search for the cure to her illness, you form bonds of friendship with the people you encounter. The king of the shadow creatures shows up and kidnaps your sister. You spend five years looking for her, and puberty turns you into Raiden from Metal Gear Rising. You finally discover the location of the Shadow Lord, but you need to go across the land to acquire keys held by powerful shades to enter his castle. You kill the shades, get the keys, enter the castle, and though you lose many companions along the way, you finally defeat the big bad guy and get your sister back. And that's pretty much the whole plot for ending A. Except it's not, really. Even as sparse as ending A is, the player can already tell there's more going on than meets the eye. There are very clear hints and suggestions that Shades aren't the mindless monster Nier insists that they are. It becomes increasingly obvious that Nier is being willfully blind to what he's doing. He doesn't want to know. He doesn't want to understand the implications. The first time this becomes really obvious is when the party returns to the Airy and gets into a situation that becomes one of the best moments in the game. Many of the residents are possessed by Shades and they attack. But the lines here quickly start to blur and it becomes hard to distinguish between what a human and what a shade is. But Nier isn't just an indiscriminate, uncaring monster. That's not the point here either. He tells the party to be careful and only attack the shades, even as difficult as that is in this situation. He is trying to help. Nevertheless, a lot of villagers die just from the fighting. This culminates in a massive shade forming after absorbing the villagers. During the fight, Emil loses control of his powers, and magically nukes the whole area, destroying the Shade, the Airy, and every single person that lived there. In response to Lemiel's lament, 
over killing innocents. Nier doesn't try to console him by telling him it's not his fault, or that there's nothing he could have done. There'd be no point, and that's not entirely true. What he does say, though, is very revealing. In essence, he tells him, yes, you did kill all those people. But you saved us, and that matters more. Don't look back. Nier is saying this as much to himself as to Emil. At this point in the game, you've gone through several other dungeons, and it's gotten more and more clear that shades are not mindless, that whatever is happening is more complicated than Nier is willing to entertain. But he doesn't care, because his ultimate goal is to save Yona, and he knows he's not going to stop no matter what he finds out. So it's better to just keep moving towards that goal and not look back not examine what he's doing or what it means. あの、ニア、ニアってゲームを作ったんですけれど、あの、その頃にはま、911とかイラク戦争とか経て、ま、どんどん世の中があの、テロとかの情報がいっぱい日本にも入ってきて、で、その時にちょっと考えが変わりま